Hi friends, in the previous video I explained about the drug absorption across cell membranes in different ways of transport like in active transport and passive transport and also discussed on about the ionization how it affects the drug absorption. In this video we will just describe on the second another part of uh, drug absorption. The oral route of drug absorption is very common route and we know that it is very easy to take. Everybody takes tablets and capsules and it is very easy to take it. But but if you want to make a tablet or anything which is of, which is of you want to take it on an oral route, the drug has to be having some few qualities which has to be bearing some of the different intestinal variables like the stomach the, the gastrointestinal tract has different pH ranges across the tract and it has some digestive enzymes, degradative enzymes and the gastric motility is different. It also it also depends on the uh, gastrointestinal tract time. So there are so many factors like this which are which affect the drug absorption. So in this video we'll just describe on describe about the different areas of the gastrointestinal tract and how in those areas what are the factors which help in the drug absorption and and how some, some of the factors which may not help in the drug absorption. So the gastrointestinal tract starts from the oral cavity from the mouth to the anus. So every anywhere the drug the we can see some of these three terms like secretion, digestion and absorption. Secretion is nothing but the release of some of the fluid or electrolytes into the lumen of the gastrointestinal tract like pancreatic juice or gastric acid secretion these are all secreted into the lumen of the gastrointestinal tract which help in the digestion and digestion is nothing but it's the process of breaking down the food particles larger food particles into smaller particles so it can be the smaller particles can be easily absorbed so that is the third one absorption absorption occurs when the drug particle or it may be of food or anything else when it is when it is broken into different small particles these can be easily absorbed through the gastrointestinal tract to the whole body actually the total transit time is for any drug, for a, in a healthy subject, it is of 0 0.4 to 5 days. In the small intestinal, especially in the small intestinal transit time is 3 to 4 hours in a healthy subject. And if it is drug is not following this order, that, that maybe the some of the the absorb the, the person is maybe here different having some of the gastrointestinal disorder something else. So we will start with the oral cavity. When you take the drug from the oral route, it starts with the oral cavity. So what, what are the factors which help in the drug absorption here? There are salivary glands. These are the, these are the salivary glands and which they secrete the tialin. Tialin is also called a salivary amylase which helps in the digestion of starch and they also secrete the mucin which lubricates the food. And almost 1500 ml of saliva is secreted from the salivary gland in a day. So from the oral cavity it goes into the esophagus. Esophagus starts connects with the pharynx and then goes down until until the point where the cardiac it reaches the cardiac orifice. 
So in the esophagus, the pH is about 5 to 6 and very little drug dissolution takes place. And the esophagus is connected to the stomach which ends with the stomach with the and at the end of the esophagus there is a sphincter called esophageal sphincter. So some of the sometimes the tablets or capsules may be lost in this area and which may cause irritation to the person. There is no absorption taking place in this esophagus. So next the esophagus leads into the stomach. We can see that there is a esophageal sphincter which actually esophageal sphincter helps in the prevention of acid reflux into the acid reflux from the stomach into the esophagus. So in this stomach, the stomach is even though it is innervated by the vagus nerve but the local nerve plexus, the mechanoreceptors which help in the which mechanoreceptors which are actually stimulated by the stretch of the gastrointestinal wall and some of the hormones, some of the chemoreceptors which help in the release of some of the enzymes like gastrin and histamine, these all are present which helps in the release of the gastric acid in the stomach. The fasting pH which you see in the in the person is 2 to 6. And the person is on fasting, he has a pH of 2 to 6 of, of the acid in his stomach. In the presence of food, the pH would be going to 1.5 to 2. And stomach acid is stimulated by the gastrin and histamine. So gastrin is a hormone which is released from the G cells of the, of the stomach and the duodenum. This stimulates the gastric acid secretion, which is actually is gastric is released from the released from the G cells of the parietal, parietal cells. And there are some of the other enzymes like intrinsic factor and the pepsin are secreted. Intrinsic factor helps in the absorption of vitamin B12 and pepsin is released which helps in the proteolysis. So stomach contains acid. So the basic drugs can easily get solubilized in this uh, stomach acid. And when the drug reaches the stomach, this is the place called antrum where the antral milling takes place like a milling takes place and from there it goes into the pylorus and from the pylorus through the pyloric sphincter it goes into the duodenum. So this gastric, this is called gastric emptying and this gastric emptying is delayed if, uh, if there is any fatty acids, meal is taken and if there are any mono and diglycerides in the stomach. The stomach leads into the duodenum. The duodenum's pH is 6 to 6.5. Here there is an increase in the pH because of the presence of the bicarbonate ions. So these bicarbonate ions they neutralize the acid, acid and uh, the acid chyme. Here the pancreas, sorry, in this there is a common bile duct coming from this bile duct of the, from the gallbladder and the liver from the top and you can see the pancreatic duct coming from the pancreas. They both join together here and they release into the duodenum which is called as orifice of common bile duct and pancreatic duct. So the trypsin, chymotrypsin and carboxypeptidases released from the pancreas they help in the proteolysis. So any protein containing food or anything, anything which of proteins coming from the stomach region, they are digested, they are cleaved here with the help of these proteolytic enzymes. 
the amylase which helps in the digestion of uh, starch come in the help in the digestion of carbohydrates the pancreatic lipases and like it helps in the digestion of uh, uh, fatty acids many drugs get solubilized here and mostly the ester pro drugs are absorbed through this gut duodenum the protein drugs are unstable in this environment because of the presence of the enzymes like uh, trypsin chymotrypsin these are proteolytic enzymes so obviously when if we, if we take a drug which is of protein they get cleaved here and that has no no use even though if you take the oral route so the duodenum goes and the duodenum uh passes into the jejunum and ileum so duodenum is also a small intestine it leads into the second part of the small intestine called jejunum here where the digestion of carbohydrates and proteins continue from the duodenum but you can you can see very few contractions when compared to the duodenum even ileum also has fewer contractions when compared to the duodenum and it all it helps in the this jejunum and ileum are helpful in the in studying some of the drug perfusion studies the ph is about 7 and the and in the ileum and if you go at the end of the distal part called it distal ileum you can find the you can see the ph of 8 This is, this is because, that is because of the presence of bicarbonate ions and as you see that there is a ph of about 8 is present here so the the acid is acid drugs can easily get solubilized in the small intestine in this ileum region so that is why most of the drugs which are acidic if they are acidic they get solubilized in this basic medium and they get absorbed through the small intestinal tract so this small intestine leads into the colon through this uh, ileocecal valve and unlike the small intestine small intestine contains large number of villi which helps in the drug absorption with larger surface area so it is a very good place to get absorbed but in colon it lacks villi so that is why there is neg- very 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 negligible absorption when compared to the small intestine and the luminal contents which pass from the stom- small intestine they pass into the colon where here the absorption of water takes place more that leads to the Uh, semi solid content semi solid type of uh, luminal contents and the transit time through the colon is also very long here the sec- it secretes the mucin which helps in the uh, lubrication and the ph is about 5.5 to 7 in the colon if the drugs some of the drugs they get absorbed in through this uh, colon region and especially when the drugs are getting absorbed through the colon region they are generally controlled release drugs because as the transit time in the colon is very long so the absorption is very long in this region they get slowly absorbed and they have a sustained type of action in the body there are some of the aerobic and anaerobic microorganisms in the colon which helps in sometimes which helps in the digestion of some of the drugs like uh, l dopa and uh, lactulose they get metabolized with the help of the microorganisms which are present in the colon and some of the diseases like crohn's disease which affects this uh, region of the colon and which makes the thickening of the bubble wall and uh, some of the drugs like propranolol they get they are much get a better absorbed through the colon region when they are having when the person is having any this kind of crohn's disease condition 
So the next the colon uh, leads into the rectum. This is the final part, part and from rectus, rectum it leads to the anus. So, so this rectum contain, is having a 15 centimeters long and the pH is about 7 in this region. The drug absorption is variable because it depends on the drug how the drug which is a, a suppository or anything else how at what place if it is keep put it in the rectum because uh, the rectum has rectal nerve plexus called hemorrhoidal veins the inferior hemorrhoidal vein middle hemorrhoidal vein and superior hemorrhoidal veins the inferior and middle hemorrhoidal veins they have a direct connection with the inferior vena cava and directly back into the heart so the the drug or supposedly given placed in this region they directly reach to the systemic circulation but the superior hemorrhoidal vein they have a connection with the mesenteric veins and then it the mesenteric veins are connected to the enterohepatic circulation and then into the liver so the drug the suppositories when they are placed in the superior hemorrhoidal vein they get pass they pass into the mesenteric veins and then into the enterohepatic circulation and then in, they get into the liver and they get metabolized so this is all about the different gas, uh, gastrointestinal tract regions where how the different regions of the gastrointestinal tract affect this drug absorption thank you very much for watching this video and please do not forget to subscribe